hello everyone welcome back to andrina's creations in today's tutorial i'm going to be showing you how to create a candy filled 3d letter it's going to be very easy and if you have watched my prior tutorials on how to make 3d letters is the same thing as a shaker letter okay now keep in mind i am creating this for mother's day but you can create this for any theme you can create them for father's day graduation seasons right around the corner you don't only have to put candy inside if it's for graduation you can even put money inside you can also make them small as party favors i always tell you guys even if you watch these tutorials use your imagination and you can create them for any theme all right guys let's get started For your materials, you're going to need your cardstock of choice. I'm using a 100 pound cardstock. The brand I'm using is Basil brand. Your treat of choice or your candy, whatever you're adding inside. I am going to be printing on Koala double sided matte photo paper. This is 66 pound 11 by 17 paper, but you can use any white cardstock of your choice. I am going to be using some glitter cardstock as well. Some double sided tape to add to the, um, to adhere the acetate. You're going to need your acetate sheets or your clear film. I like using this brand from Amazon and I have been using this new brand as well from Amazon. I'll leave the links down below as well. And you're going to need your glue of choice. I'll be using my own brand of glue and Genius Creations craft glue. And again, I'll leave all the links down below. I have an Eco Tank 16600. You can use any printer of your choice. I'll be using Silhouette Studio for the software to design, and I'll be using my Cameo's uh, cutting machine to cut out this design. Okay, the first thing that you need to do is open up your software. Like I said, I'll be using Silhouette Studio Business Edition. Silhouette has three different versions. They have Basic. Basic Edition is free. You do not need a cutting machine to use this software. You also have Designer Edition and Business Edition. They're all a one-time payment and I highly recommend it. Again, you do not need a cutting machine to use this software. I'll leave all the links down below. Again, the first thing you need to do is open up your software and then you're going to go ahead and get the template. I have a separate tutorial explaining how how to make 3d letters i have a five part series tutorial and i explain everything into full details in that tutorial but i'm going to show you again where i'm going to get the template and i'm going to purchase the template from etsy the Etsy seller's name that I got the template from, her name is Nilmara Quintela. As you can see, the template right now is $16. You get the full alphabet. You get also the numbers and some accents. You get the SVG, DFX, and PDF. As soon as you um, pay for the template, you're going to download and extract. Do not double click on the SVG to open up the template. You must go inside of your software. So if you're using Cricut, go inside of Cricut. And if you're using Silhouette, go inside of Silhouette to open up your SVG. There is two different ways that you can open up your SVGs in Silhouette. You can go to File, Merge, and then click on your SVG. Or you can go to your Quick Access, click on there, and then you're going to look for wherever you save your SVGs at. I'm going to click on the letter M. Now you can use any letter of your choice. Click on the SVG part. After you click on the SVG, there's going to be two different ones. I'm going to click on the one that says the dotted lines or the dashed lines. I'm going to click on that one. I'm just going to drag it into Silhouette. And that's from the Quick Access. You don't have to, you can't drag if you go to File and Merge. Now if you go to your Quick Access, you can drag. Now if you are in Cricut, you got to do the same thing. Now, again, remember, do not double click on the SVG and think it's going to automatically open. It's not. You must go inside of the software that you are using to open up your template. I'm going to move the template to the side and then I'm also going to color the template. I always recommend coloring the template, the color cardstock you're going to be using. I'm going to show you where the zoom in and the zoom out button is up here. It looks like a magnifying glass with the plus and the minus sign. Then again, I'm going to color the template a, a pink color because I'm going to be using pink cardstock. How to color, you're going to go to the paint palette on your right and you're going to select the color of your choice, making sure your template is selected. After that, you're going to change your media size to make sure that you are using the cardstock of your choice. I'm going to be using 12 by 12 cardstock. So the first icon on my right looks like a piece of paper. That is called your page setup. You're going to click on there and where it says media size, you're going to change it either to 12 by 12 or 8 by 11. Where it says transparency, I have mine on zero. Some people have it on 100. I like to see my mat. So it's your choice if you want to see it clear or white. 
Your next step is to size your entire template. When you're sizing templates, you must size everything together, not one piece at a time, because you not, you do not want to distort any of the elements of inside the template. So you have to select the entire template and size together. Do not just click on one and go size one at a time because it's not going to work. You must select the entire template. You must click somewhere on your screen, drag your mouse, select all your items, and pull from one of the corners, not from the middle, not from the top, not from the bottom, I'm always from one of the corners I'm going to select I'm going to go by the guide of my biggest piece here which is that long part there to fit on that 12 by 12 cardstock so while everything's selected I'm just gonna drag from one of the corners and keep extending the template until I see that everything fits in the paper now that piece in the middle there because it's big I can also rotate it to make it fit even more Okay, once you are done sizing your entire template, I'm going to show you here, this is how everything's going to look. Now you see one of those M's have those little shapes on them. That is a guide so when you are ready to assemble, you know where each of these tabs belong. So I highly recommend always leaving this M or whatever letter on your screen so when you're ready to assemble, you know where each piece goes. So if you see that circle, you know that circle tab goes on that one, etc, etc. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to create an internal offset because I want my letter to be see-through so you're able to see the candy inside. So I'm not going to duplicate the second M. I'm going to right-click and duplicate the first M. The reason why I'm duplicating is just in case I make any mistakes, I still have the original M. So again, I am right-clicking and duplicating the M. And then I'm going to zoom in again up, up there is a magnifying glass. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to do an internal offset. An internal offset is when you go inside and if you do an offset, it's in the outside. So I'm just going to click on the M and I'm going to click on internal offset. Now the distance here is going to be your choice. I'm going to let you know what um, size I'm going to do my internal offset. You do not need to do exactly how I do mine. But the one I'm going to be doing is 0 0.2, 0 0.0250. That is where I'm going to do it. And then where you see there where it says corner, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to make sure that it's a square corner, not a rounded corner inside of my M. Let me repeat that one more time. The internal offset measurements that I did was 0 0.250, not 0, 0.0. So it was 0 0.250. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to my fill icon, looks like a paint palette, and I'm going to color it black so you can actually see it here on the screen. So this is what I created. So I have this shape and this shape. I'm going to undo. Now what I want to do is I want to take this piece out of this piece, okay? So how would you do that? You're going to click here on your screen, select them both. How do you know when both things are selected? You're going to see a rectangle that's highlighted around both items. Now I'm going to go to my modify icon that has a square and a circle and I'm going to click where it says subtract all. It might look like nothing happened but if you click somewhere here on your screen, take this out, you see I subtracted this. So now actually I have a see-through letter so I need this piece here. Well let's leave this piece right here really quick. Now. Um, when I did that other tutorial, I explained to you guys like when you want a see-through letter, you need to make sure that the min that the thickness of this little strip here is the same thickness as your tabs because this is going to be glued on top of here. So you don't want this to be out out of your letters on top because then you're gonna have to trim it. So I know I didn't actually measure this tab. I wanted this to be actually thinner. Hopefully, I'm making sense. So if you want it to be the exact size of the tabs, all you have to do is go here to your rectangle shape on your left, click on your rectangle, and you're gonna come over here. Let me color this black so you can see it. And let me zoom in. You can use this rectangle as a guide when you are about to do your internal offset on your letters to make sure that this tab is the same size as your the front part of your 3D letters. Now when you was doing that internal offset, I'm gonna right click and duplicate. 
and I'm going to put this right here next to that M So now I'm going to click on the M, go to my offset, click on internal offset. You're going to use that rectangle as a guide and you're going to keep going up until your offset aligns with the end of that rectangle. And I'm going to keep going up, up, up until it's right at the top, at that rectangle, I'm sorry. Don't forget to click on the corner that is squared and then I'm going to color it black. Okay, see? So now you know when you go ahead and glue these onto here, now you know it's not going to be overlapping. Now the reason why I didn't do it like this and I did mine thinner is because you can see you don't see much of the inside now. This, this is going to be so thick that you're not able to see so much of the design inside. So I did mine a little bit thinner. And because I did mine thinner, now I have to go ahead and fix uh, these tabs just a little bit. Okay, so I hope that made sense. Now you're going to have to do the same steps that I did with that rectangle, but now you're going to measure how thin your uh, you did yours. And like I said, if you don't want to do all these steps, just do it uh, the first way that I showed you guys. Just measure the actual tabs and do it that thick. All right. So this is my um, guide to cut my tabs. Now you need to make sure that you're cutting the tabs that is going to go on the top. So remember, one part is at the bottom and then another tab is going to be the top to glue this part. Now when I did mine, I noticed that if the tabs on my left is the ones that are going to go on the top. So this tabs on the left is the one that I have to adjust. And let me move this to the side. Now I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to get my rectangle. And I'm going to line it up close to my score marks. Right there. And now I had to cut that out. How will I cut that out? I'm going to go grab my knife too. And let me zoom out just a little bit. So I could have a full vision of the tabs. Okay, so I'm going to click on my knife tool on my left. And then I'm going to make sure it's on straight. And it's going to say auto apply. I'm actually going to take that out. I'm going to unselect auto apply. And then let me zoom in a little bit more. And then I want my knife tool. I'm going to start from the top right here. And then I'm going to click and drag holding my shift key so it could stay straight and you see I'm not so close to that rectangle so I'm actually going to get off of it and let it go and I'm actually going to delete that one and start over so again the knife tool I want to get as close as possible don't forget to hold your shift key to remain straight again no that's not it that's why I don't have the auto apply on because if I had the auto apply while I'm cutting it was going to cut okay so see how close now I am from that rectangle now I can go all the way down. And I'm going to let go and now click apply. And now I cut all that out. And then use the same oh because you did cut now if you move this you're going to leave your score marks behind so make sure that you regroup everything to their score marks so right click and group and now you can move this to the side and now I'm going to repeat the same steps with this three another thing is that because I did cut and then when the machine cuts this out this is going to have a little opening like that you can actually ungroup that first before cutting if you don't want it to be opening, but that didn't disturb nothing that I was doing. But if you're kind of OCD and be like, well, I don't want that opening there. Well, let me show you. I'm going to right click and ungroup it from the score marks 
and then I'm going to right click and release compound path and then go ahead and delete that circle if you want and only leave this circle there and I'm going to click on the template um, select them both go to your modify icon and click on subtract all and now I only have one of the markings on one side but not on this side if that makes sense okay Okay, so my modifications are done. So now I have this piece, that piece, this piece, and this piece. This piece that we um, did the internal offset, this is where you're going to actually put your images on there um, because this is what you're actually going to see through the letter. So you don't put your images on the full M. You're going to actually use this, okay? So you're going to go ahead and select whatever images depending on what exactly you are designing. Um, I'm actually going to show you how to add multiple images into there. So I'm actually using my uh, kids images and I'm going to put them by order of age. And then you're just going to put your um, images on top of the letter or you can even put it behind. So I'm just going to send them right click and send it to the back. And you do not make the letter bigger. You make the you play around with the images only, not the letter. So your images are the ones that you have to make sure that you make them bigger or smaller. I'm going to send the letter back real quick so I can see what what I'm doing. Okay, so this is how I have it organized. So I'm actually going to select all the images, right click and send it to the back. Oh no, I'm not mistaken. So the letter is actually on the back. So what I did was, okay, let me, let me send this to the back so you can see. So this is how everything's looking. Now I want to put the letter in the back. So I'm going to right click and send to the back just like that. Okay. Now. I'm going to select everything, clicking here on my screen and select everything here on my screen. Then I'm going to go to my modify panel and click on divide. Wait a little bit, click somewhere here on your screen and I'll start pulling little by little until you uh, have the pieces form like that M. And I should have right click and duplicated the M um, so we knew we was exactly where we supposed to be at, but it's fine. Um, I think I don't have to pull nothing else. Make sure that you don't pull nothing unnecessary that you should have never pulled. And you can always undo. Okay, now I'm going to click here on my screen, select everything and hold on. Then can I pull this? Okay, no. Select everything, right click and group it together. Now I have that. Now remember, this is what you're going to be seeing inside of here. This is what you'll actually get to see inside here. But I'm going to right click and duplicate because regardless, it still has to be the full M, but I wanted my image not to be this big because you're not going to be able to see everything on the side, if that makes sense. So I just wanted to put my images here and this is going to go on top of here. Now I'm just going to put a quickly background on that and you can find backgrounds from Creative Fabrica. You can get it from Google, Etsy, just get any background of your choice. I'm going to put the M here on my background, select them both, go to the modify panel and click on crop. And now I'm going to right click and bring to the front this image I created, select them both, go to my uh, replica 
form panel and click on center to center them both then right click and group this together and now m with the image where exactly supposed to be because if you would have cropped at the corner you're actually not seeing that because remember this is going to be let me color this a uh, darker pink this is actually going to get oh, right click and bring to the front this is getting glued on top of here okay all right so now i have all those pieces now you're going to decide if you want to type anything here and you can download free font um from the font.com but i also have a uh, separate tutorial on how to download free fonts from the font.com but you can also get it from creative fabrica but um how do you type here oh whenever you do download fonts make sure that your software is completely closed and then after you download them then you open up silhouette and all your fonts should be in silhouette now how do you type in silhouette you're going to click on your a on your left then a on your right go ahead and select the font that you would like to use i'm picking honey and raspberries i got that from um, creative fabrica and then i'm going to click anywhere on here on my screen and i'm going to start typing so this is how it's looking now if you don't want to use this font just make sure you get off the edit mode after you type stop um stop typing after you're done typing i meant you're going to click somewhere on your screen to get off the edit mode and now you're like this but now you can select it again and you can actually switch the fonts if you want to also you can go ahead to your fill icon and change the color and you can change the outline color as well now i want to add little hearts in between the names right here in my shapes i have a heart or you can just get another heart from wherever you want or any shapes that you want i'm going to click on the heart and i'm going to just create a small heart let me color this white as well And I just right click and duplicated that heart and added one there. Now I'm going to select the entire name, right click and group. Now, um, when you do cut this out of cardstock, it's going to be individual letters that you have to glue one at a time. If you want to use cursive, so everything's together. Now let me type something in cursive. Let me right click and ungroup, select this, right click and duplicate. And let me actually change this uh, to a cursive so you can understand what I'm trying to say. So let's say you wanted to use a script font. And I'm going to uh, change the outline color and I'm going to zoom in. If you're going to be cutting this out of cardstock and use a script font, you see that the lines are overlapping inside of each other. And let me zoom in even more. It's going to be like this. So when you go ahead and cut this out, this is going to be inside like that. And it's going to be all messed up. So whenever you use a script font and you make sure that this is the font that you want to use. After you do that, you're going to right click and weld it together. And then you're going to make sure you group all your little dots and all that together. So I'm going to right click and group. If you do not weld your script font, you're going to be messing up and you're going to not understand why that happened. So I don't have to weld here because they're not actually connected. Okay. All right. I actually want to, oh, let me undo and let me group everything together and I'm going to create some offsets. So while this is selected, I'm going to go to my offset icon that looks like a double star, click on offset and you decide the distance that the distance that you want of your offset. I'm going to go to 0 0.50, 0 0.0050. And then I'm going to color that in orange, meaning that I'm going to cut that out of gold. And while that one's selected, I'm going to do another offset and do the same distance. And I'm going to color this one white. I'm going to select everything, right click and group together. And I'm going to go to the outline color and click on no color. Now I need to size this of how big or small I want this. I want this to be right here and I want it to be from edge to edge of the letter. I want it right there. 
Okay, so now technically I'm all done with everything. Now you have to start getting ready to cut. Now, you need to go ahead and ungroup this because you're cutting one out of white, one out of gold. Oh, wait. Let me... Okay. So I will cut this out three times. And that's just me again that's a preference you do not need to do that but I will be cutting this out three times each and gluing it on the top of each other so it can be very thick also one of these M's you got to cut it out of acetate oh sorry I one of these M's you have to cut it out of acetate sheet so I'm gonna duplicate and I'm gonna color it gray so y'all don't get confused so that will be the acetate sheet so you need all these pieces you need two solid M's you need all your tabs you need one acetate sheet you're gonna print this image out and then you're gonna need this for the front I'm actually going to be cutting this out two times because it's going to be one in actual pink and then the one is going to be in glitter that I'm going to put in the front all right now get ready to start cutting now you're going to put everything in your mat that fits you know this long piece had to get uh twisted like this to fit all right once you have your pieces there you're going to go to your send tab and then you're going to put the settings again i'm using a hundred pound cardstock so i like to go and put my blade on six I like my fours on 26 to 28. I'm going to actually put it on 26. And I'm going to go ahead and put a speed of four. And I'm going to do two passes. You're going to load your cardstock to your mat. Then click on send to cut. Once that is cut, then you're going to load all your other pieces. Now, once you are ready to cut this out, um, this is going to be a print and cut. You can actually cut it out by hand because this is not so difficult to cut out by hand. But if you don't want to do that and you do want to use your um, cutting machine, you need to make sure that you're putting the correct paper size. We printed this on an 8 by 11 cardstock. Make sure on your media size you put it on 8 by 11. Then here on your third option, you're going to turn on your registration marks. And I like to put my thickness all the way up. And then I'm gonna put it here now I do have a wide format printer so I do print on 11 by 17 paper so I'll put where it says with 11 and then 17 and then once you do put your letter there then you're going to go to your printer icon up here click on print so 16600 I'm gonna click on preferences I'm going to put paper tray, document size 11 by 17. You need to make sure that wherever, um, three different spots, your paper should be matching. Right here on the paper icon, second spot here on your printer preferences, and your third spot, it's on your printer. So where if I'm using 11 by 17, I have three different spots where it says 11 by 17. If I'm using 8 by 11, three different spots says 8 by 11. So here I'm putting paper type premium presentation mat, and then on high, and then okay, and then I print. Once it prints, I put this paper on my mat and then I send it to cut. All right. Once you're done cutting every, oh, sorry. Because if you are sending this to cut and we did all these um, things to this letter M, you want to select the entire M and then you're going to click cut to edge. Okay. So it can just cut like this. If you had it on cut, then the machine was going to want to cut everything out like this. Just select everything and click cut to edge. Put your settings and send it to cut all right once everything's cut i'm gonna get ready to assemble once you have folded all your pieces you're going to start gluing now make sure that the piece that you want where the candy is going to come out that you do not glue that piece okay so if you don't if you're not if you don't know yet exactly where you want them to open i actually want mine to come out through the top so I know that this part here, I'm not going to glue. And you'll see when I start gluing. So I know these pieces go here. I know this piece is going to go here. 
So I am going to be gluing the tabs together on this part and the tabs together on this part, okay? And I do like to glue my stuff from the bottom as um, some people like to glue their parts on the top. I feel better when I glue on the bottom. So I'll put my pieces through the bottom and then I'll glue them in the bottom. That's how I like to do my stuff. And that's the reason why I cut out two of these main bases, okay? Now, if you don't want to be cutting out extra cards, like, like I said, you will just glue them on the top, all right? So this is how it's looking. So make sure you glue and make sure everything's aligned correctly. You do not want your letters to come out wrong. That is the number one thing where people mess up. So just make sure everything is nice where it goes, okay? Also to make it much easier before you start gluing uh, your tabs, go ahead and glue your image to your letter now because later on it's gonna be more difficult on inserting this while this is already on. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. Again, you can do whatever you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and glue this on top of this one for now. Alright, so now I'm at the top part and like I said, I'm not going to glue this one in the bottom because I want this one to be able to open. So that's the only difference like from the other tutorial that you have to glue all the tabs. This one I'm not going to glue, okay? So I'm going to glue all the vest, but not this one. And now I'm going to glue the back of the M. So this is going to go on top of here to cover everything in the back. Now go ahead and glue your top part. Now do not glue this tab. Don't forget that those tabs do not get glued. So you're going to glue this on top here. And if you need to trim a little bit of the tab so you don't see them through, you can go ahead and do it before you glue it. So if you see that you can see the tabs a little bit, just cut it out with a scissors, okay? So just align everything and glue. Okay, and like I said, don't forget not to glue the tab in the front, on the top, or wherever you decided to put your tab at that you want it to open. And that's how it's looking. Now add your candy before you add your acetate. To glue this on the 3D letter, I'm using a dab of hot glue in each of the corner of this name because the top of my letter is glitter, not on the acetate sheet, only on the corners of the glitter. Alright guys, here is the final result. This is how it turned out. Remember, you can make this any size of your choice. You can also design it however you would like. Now, I am going to um, take out the candy and the way I did it like this, not like an actual box that they could just take out the lid, but only an opening on the top is it's going to be like kind of a... It's going to be like a kind of fun activity for whoever you give this to that they have to shake all the candy out and make sure that it comes through here, then there, then that, or whatever letter you created that they just got to make sure they shake out the candy and then reveal the image that is in the back.
and now they could use this as decoration for their office their room their living room whatever they choose okay so they're basically getting a two-in-one all right guys so i hope you guys enjoyed this quick tutorial if you did please don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell to get notified every time i upload new videos also if you're a um, new subscriber here comment down white hearts and if you are an og here if you've been watching me for a long time comment down blue hearts i would really appreciate it don't forget to follow me on tiktok facebook and instagram at andrina's creations llc also feel free to join my facebook crafting group it's called andrina's creation crafting lounge you must answer all three questions there to get approved all right guys talk to you guys later on my next tutorial bye guys